Sunday, everyone. Uh, good morning and welcome to the Impact Christian Church service. Let's get right into it. Um, I'm really happy to be um, speaking together with you and I hope that you have your Bibles out. We're going to be doing a lot of Bible reading, uh, so let's just get ready and prepare our hearts for the Word. If you could possibly open up your Bibles to the book of 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 11. Again, that's 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 11. That's also going to be on the screen below hand. Let's read it together. Verse 1. Now, brothers, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come upon them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in the darkness, so that this day should not surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness, so then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep in the night. For those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that this word that you are going to speak today will be one that will seep deeply into the hearts of everyone who is watching. Lord God, open up our hearts, open up our minds, open up our souls for what you have prepared for us today. And let us continuously be more curious and more in awe of the word that you present to us and for who you are. We love you, God, and bless this day and bless everyone who is watching. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Do you guys know that on March 22nd and March 28th, that's about a month ago or a couple of weeks ago, the word apocalypse was the most Googled search since 2004. That says a lot about what's going on in the world today, that people would actually Google search the word apocalypse so many times. And to make things worse, I don't know, but the word apocalypse was Google searched the most amount of times at 12.06 a.m. So it says a lot about what people are doing at 12.06 a.m. But it does say a lot about what the world is starting to think of the most. Is the world ending? Is Jesus coming soon? Is his second coming coming soon? Well, I hope that today I can put some hope into the fear that you may be having about this end times. So today I want to be talking about that day. That one day when the Lord is coming back. And today in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we see that there are a lot of things that Paul says as a commandment or at least as an advice for the people of, um, or of this church. And it can also be advice for us as well. We're going to start with talking about what is the day of the Lord. Then we're going to be seeing if you are awake, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. And then we're going to be seeing how we can be prepared for this day of the Lord. So let's go to the first question. What is the day of the Lord? Well, fortunately, chapter 5 talks about two metaphors explaining about the coming day of the Lord. The first metaphor is that of the thief. And it says over here that it's going to be like a thief in the night. Just like how a thief shows up unexpectedly, surprisingly, in the middle of the night to come and maybe rob a house. The day of the Lord is going to be coming unexpectedly, right? It's not as if a thief is going to be showing up to your door a day beforehand saying, Hi, I just wanted to introduce you a little bit. I'm a thief. I'm going to be coming to your door tomorrow at 10 o'clock p.m. Here are my blueprints. Here's my plan of how I'm going to do it. Just letting you know you can prepare. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. But I'm going to come tomorrow. Probably not going to do that. So just like the day of the Lord, a thief is going to come unexpectedly, surprisingly. A pregnant mother is the second metaphor. Just like how a pregnant mother is aware that their nine months is going to be amounting to a labor pain at the end, it's just like how the Lord, the day of the Lord is going to be inevitable. 
right? A pregnant mother probably understands that there are going to be labor pains at the end of the nine months. There is going to be a period of time when they're going to be receiving this pain before they give birth to their baby. At the same time, we know that the coming of the Lord is coming. We know that it is inevitable. So what is the coming of the Lord? It's unexpected, but it's inevitable. Matthew 24 verses 32 to 33 talks about the parable of the fig tree. And let's open it up really quickly. Matthew chapter 24 verses 32 to 33. It says this. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near right at the door. So yes, the day of the Lord might be unexpected and inevitable. But fortunately, as Christians, we can be aware of the season of the coming of the Lord. We know that just like how the fig tree starts to sprout during the summer, that when we see certain signs that are occurring, that the coming of the Lord is near. But what if you aren't aware of the coming of the Lord? See, what if you are, quote unquote, asleep when the coming of the Lord happens? And this is the second question. Are you awake? Verses six to eight talks about this analogy of sleep. It talks about drunkenness in the same way. See, sleep over here in verses six to eight doesn't necessarily mean something literal. It doesn't mean falling down on your pillow and um, going to sleep and going to have your dreams. No, it means an inactivity, an ignorance means that you're defenseless. See, it's a type of spiritual laxity. Spiritual laxity. It's when you are laxed in your spiritual health. If that doesn't make sense, just take this example. Pretend that there is a ship hand, uh, handling tons, maybe hundreds of passengers, and they're about to hit a huge hill of rocks. The captain is asleep. What about if there is a city among a plague and there are hundreds of people dying, but the doctor who has the cure is asleep? Or what if there is a prisoner who is about to face his execution and the man carrying his pardon letter, the letter that says that he will not be executed, is in the other room asleep? See, in all three of these situations, the people that are in charge of a certain thing or a certain job are aware that these situations might happen, right? With the man with the pardon letter, he had one job. All he had to do was just go to the other room and give the letter to the executioner. But when it mattered the most, they were asleep. Are you a sleeping Christian? And see, what does it mean to be asleep? And in fact, what does it mean to be awake as a Christian? Well, turn with me to Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. And it says this, And do this understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on an armor of light. Let us behave decently, as in the daytime, riot, riot, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual morality, immorality or debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of your sinful nature. Don't be asleep. And what does it mean to wake up? Don't fall and desire your sinful natures. And if you are a sleeping Christian, well, I'm telling you right now, wake up. And so how do we prepare? This is the third thing that we can find out. How can we prepare? Well, fortunately, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 talks about an armor, a breastplate and a helmet. We'll go first into the breastplate. It says here to have a breastplate of faith and love. You know, I love how it says specifically a type of armor. 
because soldiers would typically use a breastplate when going into battle, right? They wouldn't go into battle without using their breastplate because they would have the vital organs. It would protect them, right? Like the heart or the lungs. It would make sure that they would have the least amount of um, surmountability of being hurt or killed. It's the same thing like if an FBI agent were going into a shooting range, they would have to have a bulletproof vest because they would ensure that their vital organs would be secure. And it's the same with being a Christian, that we must be equipped every single day with faith and love. And what about the hope of salvation? What about this helmet? Well, a helmet also protects the vital organs, right? It protects the head, the brain. And so just like this hope of salvation, we must continue to be confident and knowing that God's got it all under control. And we do this, we'll continue to be the children of the light and children of the day, which is what it says in verse five. And how do we become children of the light and children of the day? Well, we go back to Romans chapter 13, verse 13, where it says that if we are children of the light and the day, we won't feed into our sexual desires. We won't feed into our fleshly desires. We would be doing good for others. The entire book of James tells us exactly how we can be children of the light and children of the day. But in hearing these things, and in wondering if the day of the Lord is coming near, what do you have inside of your hearts? Are you fearful? Are you afraid? What are you thinking in your minds? Well, I'm hoping that as Christians, you don't worry. Because fortunately, we have nothing to fear if our lives are in harmony with what the day represents. We have nothing to fear if our lives are in harmony with what the day represents. What does the day represent? The second coming of Jesus. What should our lives be in harmony with Jesus? See, it's just like if we were to have a surprise birthday party, right? If we had, if your friend, for example, hosted a surprise birthday party for you and you fling open the door and you see hundreds of strangers opening up and saying, surprise, happy birthday. You'd probably be really confused. You'd probably be like, friend, do you really know me that well? Also, who are these hundreds of people? I have no idea who they are. No, you probably have people there showing up at your birthday party who are knowing you really well, who have been comfortable around you, who you've maybe grown up with. Right, so that when you open the door and you yell surprise, you would be truly surprised, but also you can get right into the celebration. You wouldn't have to take time in, in um, introducing yourself, saying, hi, I'm Alicia, this is my birthday party. I don't know why you came, but uh, thank you for coming. No, you wouldn't have to do that. You can go straight into the celebration. It's the same thing for when Jesus comes again. When he comes again, you don't have to be a stranger to him and he doesn't have to be a stranger to you. You can go straight into the celebration, into knowing that, yes, he has finally come. You don't need to be going into those introductions or preparing and maybe doing some last minute things. You can go straight into it, right? Similarly to the birthday party, you might not know when the birthday party is, but you know that when it happens, you'll be surrounded with people that you are happy with that you love, that you are comfortable with, that you know. And I hope that you don't have fear for when this day happens. In fact, you should have hope. Because think about it. If you love someone so much, wouldn't you be so excited to meet them again? And this quintessential love that we've been introduced to, the one who loved us first, the one that didn't have this standard love, had this agape love, who loved us first, that we love back. How could we be terrified of meeting them when they come? But when the day does come, I hope that you guys will be ready. I'll give one final little story. 
There's this one theater show that was happening um, that a lot of people went to. It was a very, very famous and popular theater show. Um, and there was a lot of people that came and then suddenly in the middle of the, um, the actual show, the theater manager runs up to the stage and says, everyone, the theater is on fire. There's a brief pause. And then suddenly the audience starts wowing. Wow, this theater show is so real, it's so alive. The theater manager is like, no, 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 seriously, the theater is on fire, please get out. Another brief pause, then the audience starts applauding. This theater show is so good. These characters are really coming to life. The theater manager is like, no, seriously, the theater is on fire. And then the audience gets up off their feet and starts applauding, has a standing ovation. And it's like, wow, I really got my money's worth with these tickets. Now it's safe to say how the story ended. But I'm wondering that with the events that are occurring today, are we going to be simply spectators applauding? Or are we going to be aware of the signs and preparing? I really hope that you're the second one. That with everything that's going on, we don't have to fear, but we do have to prepare. Make sure that you have that faith and love as a breastplate. Make sure that you have that helmet of hope of salvation. Make sure that you are not asleep when it matters the most. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that this message will seep deep into the hearts of everyone that is listening. Lord God, we are not fearful of the day of when you come back. We are expectant. We are excited. We are overwhelmingly joyous of the day that you return because we know that it is not a day that we should be fearful of, but a day when we get to meet face to face the one that we love so, so much. God, we love you and we surrender everything into your loving hands. We thank you for this message and I pray that those who are listening will continue to be safe, healthy, healthy, and just filled with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Happy Sunday. The announcements for this week. First, you can give offering through Venmo at ICC Rosemead or uh, at this address. Uh, second, we have a midweek service on Wednesday at 11 a.m. on our Facebook Live, so be sure to join that. And lastly, join a live group. Contact either me or Alicia. Have a great week. Well, praise the Lord. I'm sure you're blessed by the word this morning. I'm also sure you're encouraged as well to be ready, to be prepared when that day comes. Indeed, it's not a terrifying day, but it is a joyful, unspeakable joy that we can experience the day that is full of joy when Jesus comes again because he's coming for his church and we are his church if you are truly born again Christians filled with the Holy Spirit you will be longing for that day because it's the day where we will meet our loved one the one that we love so much Jesus Christ our Lord before I'm closing in prayer, let me just extend an invitation for you, if you've never accepted Christ in your heart, to open your heart right now. If you still have fear because you don't know whether you will go to heaven, you will spend the rest of your life in eternity with the Lord, I want to invite you. I want to give this invitation to you. Open your heart and invite Jesus. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior by praying this simple prayer. Lord, I open my heart. Please come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died for me and I believe that you rose from the dead. I give my life to you, Jesus, and use me for your glory. 
Amen. If you pray that prayer, I believe something supernatural has taken place. The Bible calls that it's a born-again experience. I want you to be planted in a church where you can grow. Well, we have our church here service on Sunday at 11 o'clock here. You can find the, uh, the address uh, below the screen. But again, wherever, whatever church you go, I want to invite you. I want to encourage you to continue to grow in the Lord, loving Him and walking with Him every day, spending time with Him every day, learning to listen to His voice, learning to do His will and be the light that God wants you to be in this world. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word this morning. The word that has encouraged us and also reminded us that your coming is inevitable. Your coming is so certain. Whether we believe it or not, whether we be we're ready or not, you are coming because the signs that are happening today have shown us so clearly that the end of the days, your coming is so near. So, Father, I pray for each and every one of us, whoever is listening, wherever they are right now, that your spirit will speak to them and will touch them. In the name of Jesus, bless them, Lord, and give them peace if they are going through life's challenges right now, I pray that you will show up in their lives. In the name of Jesus, I bless them. Amen. God bless you and see you next week.